you guys. Thanks so much for being here with me today. So I'm very excited to hear more about the latest project that you guys are working on. So we have a few questions just to get to know you a little bit better. And the first question I want all of you guys to answer is, what's your favorite fruit? <laughs> are we just all being polite? <laughs> my, my favorite cuisine is fruit. Okay. Like, I, I just like fruit. Everything but papaya. No papaya. Papaya is a sin. My favorite fruit is actually mango. I'm not playing. But my dad's from the Caribbean, so I grew up eating mangoes. And it's, it's my favorite. My neighbor has this tree that I've been wanting to steal from for like many years, and it's oranges. So mm. I think oranges are my favorite fruit. Adeline, we know that your favorite fruit is mango, but can you discuss how the song title became mango? Is it because it's your <laughs> favorite fruit or? Well, the song title, um, so Kamau and I, you know, we wrote the song in the studio with Morgan and the, I, I remember I stepped out. We wrote the song very quickly and I stepped out of the room and I came back and they were like, oh, we named it Avocados. And I was like, what? Avocado, singular. Avocado? <laughs> okay, so the session was called Avocado. <laughs> and then when we were releasing the song, Kamau was like, I want to name it Avocado. And I was like, uh... Okay, and then we we decided to brainstorm on fruit because we. I remember the call. You called I, me. Yeah, I called and was like, it doesn't feel right. Avocado, <laughs> it don't feel right. But then we did, we talked and we brainstormed like we both agreed that it had to be a fruit name for some reason. Yeah. That was your idea. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then I was like, what about mango? And it's funny because actually a, a couple of days before that I was biking on the Brooklyn Bridge, and I saw that it's weird. I never told you, but I saw that sign on the on the ground that said mango, and I was like, oh, that's a cool word. Um, and I was like, I'm gonna use it for something, mm. and it just so it was sent to me. And then wow. later on we had a conversation and we decided mango, and it stuck, right? Which is also crazy because. Then we found the car for the video, mm -hmm. which is not intentional, which is a mango co colored yeah. buggy. Yeah. Yeah. So. It was supposed to be mango. Serendipitous. Serendipitous. Yeah. yeah. I would love for each of you guys to discuss the meaning or process behind you guys' own verse for each of your verses. And then if you could just kind of break it down a little bit for us. Okay. <laughs> if you found some other dude, obviously, you know what that means. Um, what is it? What would you do? What, what do, do I, I do if he loves you truly? Okay, so I guess I'll start there. The song comes from an actual situation where I was experiencing being uh, in love and loving a, a person which whom I was not in a right place to form like a like so-called committed relationship with. So we both were single. But we both knew that we wanted to be with each other. But because of like where I was in my life and where she was in my life, like that couldn't actually work out. And um, at that moment, I realized I was blocking her blessings. And I think the most important thing that we can have as our species, as human beings, are friends. Um, it's the holiest type of connection, holier than family. Um, if you're lucky, your family are your friends. But well, friends specifically are people who are deeply invested in your survival, health, and well-being, right? And so in romance and in any situation, I believe that it's better with friends. Business, you know, family, you know, romance. And so I wanted to be her, her friend. And I wanted to, okay, if, if this is something that you need right now, I don't want to get in the way of that. Because as your friend, I want you to, to succeed and to be healthy and to be, you know, productive, you know, and so there, there are plenty of other guys that were offering what I could offer, I guess, but also like were present and in the same space as her, which is something that she wanted. If you find some other dude, what do I do if he loves you truly? If he's also like a great guy, how could I not love him too? If he improves you more than I used to. So if this person, if you're someone who I care about and all I want is for you to be good, I feel like it makes sense for me to love whatever makes you good. Like if you're good. You know, and so I think uh, I realized that what sh would make her good and, and OK in that situation would be someone who is closer, who could give things that I wasn't able to give. That's fourth. I don't want anything but you getting what you need, even if it isn't from me. I might have skipped the lyric, but that's pretty much the sum of the verse. That song feels like and we didn't realize that at the time, but like now that, you know, sitting here and discussing it feels like a big responsibility. And that's the one of the responsibilities we have as artists is 
you know, there's so much weight and impact in our words and just making a love song is, is what's done most commonly in music. But I, I'm, I'm proud that we sort of approached a different subject in terms of love. A lot of songs are about I'll make you love me and it, and very often love is sort of a Porsche, it's like uh, almost selfish thing of what, what does that love do for me? What can you do for me? Um, so this whole concept of service and of purpose is, is, is a big responsibility to kind of approach love from such a broad spectrum. But in my verse, I think I respond to Kamal's verse and, and following up on the concept of, of the friendship, which should be, I believe, I think we all believe, in a healthy relationship at the base of the relationship. Mm -hmm. And my question to the person in the song is, well, what if I actually happen to fall for someone else? What if I, you know, I get hit by lightning one day and how would you react? Will, would you still be my friend? You know, when I say, would you still talk to me? It, it's really, would, would you still be my friend or would you hate me? Would you hate me for something that I didn't choose necessarily? And that, that's, that's, that's really tricky and, and complicated, but I guess if, if the friendship is at the base, you can't really hate me. You know, very often we hurt people in love without meaning it. It's, it's unintentional. Um, but yeah, going back to the friendship being at the root of, of it, it just kind of helps with not feeling so hurt and not hating someone. We should never resolve to hate. Um, so yeah. So. First, I start my writing process with being conversational and visual. So if I'm having a conversation with this woman I'm trying to not be toxic with, I'm going to just start with honesty. So I said, won't lie, you got my heart so frozen. I can live with that as long as you're golden. So I was like, honesty, but then also not being toxic. And then the visual aspect of it is, I was thinking of uh, the Omarion's Icebox music video. I was like, this is how I feel. <laughs> Boom. So I wanted to... I wanted it to feel like that when I wrote that first line because that's your attention grabber and it's adding to the story that they built so amazingly. And so I made this scenario just to kind of like further how serious I was. It was, if you ever invite me to your wedding, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I won't ruin your special day. So then I'm picturing Dwayne and Whitley and I'm like, I ain't going to do that, <laughs> even though it was beautiful. But just like I'm picturing me in my most petty bag, like petty Pendergrass level. And I was like, nah, I wouldn't even do that. You can trust me during this very special day in your life. That's how much I'm not going to be toxic to your new love. And let me see, we have some scatting going on just to kind of illustrate the different thoughts and emotions in my mind. And I, I love to have conversations with my saxophone because it can kind of say what I can't write. And so I wanted to give that to the song where you know, I didn't have that much to add to the story, but I had an emotion and a feeling to add to the story. And then I wanted to end it with, I wish you well. I know you moved on and I want the best for you. And, you know, again, just clean conversation. And I think the love that I was trying to write about was just honest, pure. And then what we were saying in the chorus, just like not being selfish, because I mean, a lot of being a man is just this ego and me, me, me. And I'm so strong and I'm so I don't feel anything. But I feel like what I wanted to approach with this was just the opposite of that. Trying love in a different way, because all of the comments on the song was like, oh, this is such a different type of way to approach love. And I loved that conversation versus, you know, what you were saying. There's so many songs about this, so many songs with these feelings. So I was like, let's really dart in this direction and highlight this feeling. So, Sega, you just uh, spoke on, you know, how you don't want to be toxic with a specific person you care about, but what's wrong with toxic relationships that you guys see so much today? So I don't know what toxic means. I don't know the dictionary definition, mm. um, as in verbatim. I think that's important when communicating with someone, understanding if you are using the word with the same meaning, right? And so I don't know if there is also a concise communal definition of the word toxic either. If everybody's like, Toxic are these bulletin lists of things. I don't know if that exists. So I think what I can do rather is try to pinpoint what things make romantic love difficult. One of those things I think is uh, communication. And I think another really important one of those things is self-love or the lack thereof or self-appreciation or self-comfortability. Uh, so I think the third thing that makes romantic love so difficult um, today is the 
misunderstanding of what romantic love is for. If it is for a thing, I have a perspective on it. So I think one, I said before, it's a survival mechanism given to us by evolution to keep us in packs, right? To keep parents with the child, right? And to keep child with the parents. And then we find someone else because, you know, we're sexual, not asexual. So I'm not doing it with myself, I'm doing with someone else to belong the species. And so I think that on one hand, primitively, deep down inside, we're just practicing until we find the one, right? And I think whether we're looking for that or not, in general, every single experience in your life is an opportunity for you to evolve and adapt to a world that's always changing. In, in a world that's social and is getting smaller, every person that we come in contact with provides a specific and unique number of experiences that we could see ourselves differently. And there was a class I took called Color Aid, where you take um, three sheets of uh, a pack of a ton of paper, a hundred different sheets of paper, each of them was a different color. So say you take um, one color, right? And you could take like a, a light pale lime green. And you put that lime green on top of a very, very dark burnt yellow, right? And then you put that same color green, you cut it in half, and you put it on a background that's like a very, 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 even more pale, even more like a, a faded uh, sky blue, right? That green looks like com two completely different colors. Like if I showed you, even if you saw me cut it in half, you would say, that's not the same green. And that green is like us. And those backgrounds are different people. And so it's hard to love yourself when you don't know yourself. And you get to know yourself through experiencing life. And some of those experiences we have in life are different people. So all of these relationships that we enter, the point of each of them, I don't think, is to be, a, be the one or get married or have a child or whatever. But I think the point of those situations is to get our, to know ourselves even better so that whatever we encounter in the future, we're better at executing the only tool that we have, which is ourselves. And I think that when we understand the fundamental purpose of love, we start we stop putting so many unrealistic expectations on it, as in, I don't even know who the hell you are, but somehow I'm going to make this, this is going to be the thing that I'm going to develop and spend the rest of my life with. Odds are, probably not. A lot of us spend our entire lives dating and we don't marry 90% of the people that we date, right? Because that's a very crowded relationship. I just kept everybody and I'm married and all of y'all. It's not gonna work, even if you're polygamous or whatever. So um, I think that one, understanding the fundamental purpose of love. Two, once we understand that all of these experiences that we have, all these people just bring out certain sides of ourselves that we get to know that we can utilize or do away with if they don't serve us, that helps us get to know ourselves, right? So if we, if we understand the fundamental purpose of love and we allow our, our lives and situations to help us to get to know ourselves better. And lastly, I think if we communicate uh, better, in knowing ourselves and where we are, state, okay, this is what I want, this is what I'm looking for up front. I think that'll make love a lot easier. And when we don't do any three of those things or all three of those things, you're really just playing Russian roulette with your heart. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's a good snaps. And so how do you practice healthy human connection in your daily life? Honestly, knowing the people around me that I deal with on a day-to-day, -day, like, what is their personality type and what are their love languages? I think those are the two foundations I go with because even as an adolescent, I was thinking my father's love language was gifts and it was acts of service. So I keep buying this man ties and random things and he's just not responding. You know what I'm saying? Or just the personality type where if he starts arguing, you should probably just lay down because he's not going to, you're not winning an argument. But just knowing the thing that comes with his personality type was a thing that I wanted to know and like take that into any type of relationship when I got older. So nowadays, I'm trying to figure those two things out. If, if I'm spending my time and money with you, like I wanna know what these two things are so I can, if I love you, I wanna give what you respond to properly. So that's kinda how I do it. What does a healthy relationship look like to you? Well, I think, I mean, this might sound boring, but I, I think it's important. You have to have a healthy relationship with yourself first before you can have a healthy relationship with somebody. And if you're not right with yourself, no one can save you. So the relationship is not gonna save anything. It's, I think a healthy relationship by default is, is 
a relationship that you don't necessarily need in order to fulfill something in particular, but mm -hmm. something that is kind of an add-on to your life that just that makes your life, you know, more fun and makes that makes that car ride more fun, you know, because sometimes you don't want to be the DJ while you're driving, mm. so, you know, but, but yeah, I, th I think it's communication is so important. Um, speaking the same language is not always the case, but finding the common words, you know, like what does toxic mean to, mean to you and what does it mean to me? And let's just find common ground and make sure we're talking about the same thing. Um, yeah. That's good. That's all I got. That's <laughs> okay, but I want to say thank you guys so much for answering all our questions and learning more about you guys' project Mango and just getting to know you guys a little bit deeper as artists. So I do appreciate you guys coming to speak with us all.